with the Mario Master over here. <laughs> oh, man. I'm too exasperated to say any, anything else on the matter. Yeah. This has been a trial. Whereas, That's understatement. Whereas mu as much of a fun romp as Mario World is, is at the beginning of the game, you get to these last two worlds, and they are they are just taxing on your patience and very trying on your skills. Yeah, it just yeah, it definitely reminds me of like why people think that uh, the new Super Mario Bros. series feels like it's too easy because I feel like the early levels are definitely just about as easy as. Yeah. As they are, but I feel like the difficult levels that aren't, you know, like the bonus levels are definitely much um, yeah. more difficult. No, the new Mario games, they don't really get to this level of difficulty until like the last, last levels. Hmm. No, but even then... I don't think I ever had this much problems with, uh... No, definitely New Super Mario Bros. It's like... Okay, New Super Mario Bros. 2. The 3DS one. The 3DS one, yeah. That game... That game, I had zero problem with it. Because it is just coins everywhere. That is the entire point. Yeah. You have so many coins, you have so many one-ups, it is not a challenge at all. Yeah. But, also, the level design, I did not have, like, a single issue with that game until, like, the very last level. Ow, shucks. I won't. It's like, Man. the, the, la the last, last, last level of the game, like, right before the boss, is when the game, like, started getting hard. <laughs> and at yeah. that point, I had so many lives, I had nothing to worry about. <laughs> Overall, though... Yo, it's always me. In some ways, being tiny has been helpful here. Yeah, I... These... Last couple of stages, being small really kind of assists you. I mean, you need it to get to the secret exit in that one... In that ghost house. Unless you, like, Don't necessarily time... need it. Yeah, unless yeah. you time that cape perfectly. And slip through that crack. Honestly, in the fortress, being tiny helps you slip past the uh, spike blocks a lot faster. Dang it. You know, I almost want to experiment there and see if, like... You can make that jump? Yeah. I almost want to experiment and see can... if the, you can just wait on that block for the block snake to come back up, but I think it'll despawn. I have a feeling, too. Like, I want to test it out, but I don't. If it was recreated in, um, in Mario Maker, or if it was the new Super Mario series, I it wouldn't be fun. Like, they yeah. they actually allocate, they can allocate the space. Yep. This game, not so much. But, I mean, the fact that they were able to even conceive the idea of just deallocating the, uh, these things just so that uh, the game can run optimally. Yeah, that's true. You don't want too many resources being taken up in your Super Nintendo game. Yeah. Even though it was cutting edge hardware at the time, it still had its limitations. They say Genesis does when Nintendo don't. But the Super Nintendo... Yeah, by the... <laughs> With it, all that uh, blast processing, of course. Yeah. Super, Ni 
Nintendo actually gave the Genesis, like, quite the run for its money. Mm -hmm. I think, technically, the Super Nintendo is, like, by far the superior system when compared to the Genesis. Like, you're comparing their specs and such. Right. It's just that the Genesis came first, and it had glass processing, which was just, like, a fancy made-up term for something else going on with the Genesis hardware that I don't remember what the explanation is, but... <laughs> if you have the chance... I know exactly the video that I'm thinking of that explained all this. Okay, I wanna... But I couldn't get that. If you have the chance, go check out uh, James Rolfe's video comparing the uh, Super Nintendo and the Genesis. The Angry Video Game Nerd, for those of you who don't know his real name. This... But, do you mind? Magic this is dumb. Now. Do you mind? <laughs> I'm trying to get through. He... He, he sniped... minded very much. He very much did mind. And he sniped me through the crack in the block. example of the game kind of just playing with your patience because there's no checkpoint after this and you just kind of have to wade through this block snake section section every time you want to get to the next part yep at this point of the game they knew people would be used to blowing through levels and they wanted to make sure people got their money towards the cartridge I mean, how much did this the SNS cards um, cost back in the day? That's a good question. I'd probably say somewhere around like a basic SNES game, probably forty dollars. And that's not adjusted for inflation. Not not adjusted. Like just just thinking of like standard video game prices. I mean, nowadays a game costing sixty dollars is nothing unusual, but it also has a lot to do with the better hardware and the technology it's made with. I, the, me zooming down that slope screwed me up so bad. Yeah. It's like um. I'd say if back in 1990 whatever, if you were go to go to oops, if you were go to uh, KB Toys and buy yourself a Super Nintendo game, it probably would have cost you maybe 40 or 50 dollars. And it depends on the publisher too. That's right. It actually mattered uh, then. Because your first party Nintendo games are always going to be more expensive than third party ROMs. Right. At the same time, I actually didn't know that uh, N64 games were actually at that like sixty dollar price tag. The card like a lot of them, just because the cartridges were more expensive to make than the more common disc format used for other systems of that generation. Yeah, which is probably why um, they started going away from that. Pretty much. It's also part, probably part of the reason why PlayStation was going yeah. so well. Which is hilarious, considering that the PlayStation and Nintendo, like Sony and Nintendo, were uh, partnering on that at first. Yeah, that was the 
origin of the PlayStation was the uh, partner, uh, partnership between Nintendo and Sony to uh, create a CD add-on for the SNES. And also, out of those deals came the Philips CDI, because Nintendo was trying to do the same thing with Philips. <laughs> That is where the reason Hotel Mario and the Zelda CDI games came to existence. So that's that was a fantastic part of that deal. See, yeah, if this were you, you can make it through. But this game's a lot um, pickier with letting you slip through those one block gaps. Seconds to be wary. They would not put a checkpoint in this. My goodness. Hmm. And the best part is that the fight that they do is the exact same as Aki, just with fireballs. Yep. Just the same battle, but with more fireballs. Yep. I wonder if somebody has uh, managed to just fly from here. We got disconnected. Okay, I'm just waiting for him to say something. We got disconnected for a moment there. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. It's a good thing we can cut away uh, for part of that. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to ask because the uh, steam or something was making a funny noise just now. Hmm. As if you were trying to call, as if you got disconnected or something. Uh, it, it looked like it hung up, so. Oh, okay. You killed him. I killed him. I had to wait for another one to show up. <laughs> and I killed that one too. Well, you can slip through the crack up there. The upper one. Oh, the upper one. Ah! Uh, that was a good idea on my part, but then I screwed it up. Well, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try something stupid. Are you gonna try to fly? Go for it. You know what? Oh, the block snake does not despawn while it's off screen. It almost worked though. It almost it worked. It almost worked. Huh. Maybe we are making this a little harder on ourselves than it needs to be. I don't know. But, uh... I'm gonna try that again.
Oh, the black, the black snake keeps going. Hmm. So it doesn't despawn. That's intriguing. Well, it was worth a shot. Yeah. <laughs> We're just getting to the point where now we have to exploit. Yep. Yep. You know, it's we, uh, we, we gave the game its fair shot for doing it the way it wants us to do it. We might as well go and use our top secret area to get as many cave feathers as possible. <laughs> I think what you were doing was totally doable. Uh, absolutely. It's like there are obstacles in the way. Okay. I got up here. Nope. Okay. Not quite. You gotta be... Yeah. You, it, you can do it, but you gotta be really careful. Yeah. I, I'm not gonna attempt it again, because I, I, I want to try to save the cape for when I actually yeah. get over to the to that area. Which is actually the other reason, because if it didn't work, then I would be back to being small Mario while yeah. having a cape feather in my inventory. Honestly, yeah, um... Doing it this way might be the best way. So you can hang on to the cape feather there and uh, just kind of let it chill out till the cat gets to the walls of magic Koopas. Then, if you got the cape feather in storage, you can just break it through those walls. Yep. And you can also get rid of the dry bones, because they're also a big problem. Yep. Oh no. Mm. Better grab it. Well. Okay. I think you're, you're alright. This is about where you would probably deploy it anyway. I, I would have waited until I was actually at the Yeah, wall, but... but it's generally the same area. Magicians. Well, got through the first one. Yeah, I was able to get through this. There's a green block right down here. Yeah, I was able to get I uh, because I was able to fight this. Is it just me or is the potaboo's moving? It could be. Yeah, that's... It could be just like playing on our senses because the platform is moving. Yeah. Ah, shoot. Cool. I was half thinking of like standing on top of one of the chain walls and yeah, waiting, but I, I, I kind of want to push. Do this though. We're getting 
the hang of it. At the very least, uh, we we have at least gotten to to Larry. Yeah, this is this is the penultimate level of the game, basically. It expects you to yeah, get it. Go here. <laughs> well, I guess now you can just wait. Yeah, I'll just wait. Stay relatively close, just in case uh, there is some sort of despawning. Yep, there it is. Hello, Black Snake. We will go for a walk. You are my friend. Your pet snake. My pet snake. His name's Spaghetti. I mean, first the uh, the eel and now the Black Snake. Is that how this works? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You do the same thing that I did. Yeah. Got a little too close. I'm very surprised that didn't hit me. <laughs> it brushed your hair. Gently brushed Luigi's hair. Part of me wants to follow that block snake down, but I know it's probably just gonna lead to death. I mean, if the rewind feature was available, I would have said go for it. You can do that online, though. I, I, I thought that the SNS one didn't have the uh, online, the uh, rewind feature yet. I think it does. Hmm. You can deflect the magic with the cape. You can deflect the magic with the cape. That's interesting. I never knew. Then again, I guess that makes sense. The cape in Smash Bros. is a reflecting move. I'm not sure. I actually almost knew it. Right at the tail end. Yeah. Well. Alright, here we go. 100, se 100 seconds. Right. How fit? You you beat the, both the bosses that uh, were in that style. I, I beat both of them. Yeah, I beat the first one. I beat the last one. Full we'll oh, this. Thank you. And oop to the castle. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> that sums up my feelings exactly. Mario, <laughs> sure. Has defeated Larry Koopa <laughs> in castle number seven. All that is left is Bowser's castle, where Princess Toadstool is being held. Can Mario rescue her and restore peace to Dinosaur Land? <laughs> Oddly spaced sentence. <laughs> it's because they wanted to make sure that it was in a box. Yeah. Well. Oh. That was an experience. Yep.